Now, one of the biggest things in any club selection for me is about confidence. If you've got confidence with the club in hand, nine times out of 10, things work out better. Better than they do, in fact, if you've got less confidence or no confidence in your club, and it's a big, big factor. And I think being able to reach for something like this seven hybrid, it's, I think for the majority of players, it would inspire confidence. It sits behind the ball, showing a lot of the face, showing a lot of loft. You sort of get that impression, you know, if I can get this club on ball, it's gonna get it airborne, it's gonna get it up and out there. I love the way they present the face with this kind of, right down the middle you see no lines, and to the left and right of centre, you see the white lines, and it really emphasises where the middle of the club is, as does that minimal sort of dot pattern on the top. So it's its superb address, and it really does, like I said, inspire confidence. And I feel like with the length of shaft, I'm holding nothing more than a sort of, I don't know, six iron or something in my hand. So it just feels incredibly positive in the mindset before I've even hit a golf ball. And I can't hit a golf ball yet because there's someone on the green. Right, the green is clear, let's see how we get on. So like I said, giving me confidence. Love the short club in hand. Oh, it's picked it up, look at the ball flight. Picks it up so easy. That's not enough club from here. So I would say that's playing, judged on that shot alone. What we're we looking at, probably about a sort of 160 club, I reckon, 165 carry that has gone. But again, really nice, dead easy to pick up. And as I said, really confidence inspiring. Right now, I'm going to use the word uh, versatility probably quite a few times because I think, uh, you know, any hybrid uh, is a versatile club to have in the bag. But the idea of this seven hybrid for me just adds a, a few extras, which we'll probably get to shortly. But the first one is, uh, is playing from the rough. I think that every, most golfers, again, would prefer to take a hybrid than an iron from the rough. There's that, always that uh, problem about it sort of twists an iron quite easy, a bit more stability in the head of the hybrid. But the thing about this club, again, it's that loft and how it sort of sits at a dress. And all it's sort of saying to me right now is, and put half a swing on this, let me do the rest and I'll pop this ball out of here, no problem whatsoever. And again, you then go from versatility and back into confidence. Um, because they're the two things, the two words, key words that I would associate with this club. Anyway, does it get it out of the rough? That's the question. <laughs> I mean, does it get it out? We probably can't even pick that ball flight up on the camera, but seriously, you know, that's just cut right through the turf. The ball flight, I, quite honestly, is no different than what I've played it from a tight lay off the fairway, nor from off a tee. It's a towering ball flight and has just cut through that with no problem whatsoever. Now, I just want to interrupt for a second and just say that although I'm suggesting everyone should have this club in the bag, I do realise that there are a couple of golfers out there, maybe what I class as the minority, who may choose not to put this in. I'm probably talking about the better player. So if you're looking to flight the ball down a little, you're really going to struggle with this type of club in the bag. It does one thing, and that is get the ball airborne very, very easy, very, very quickly. The other thing to consider is perhaps the course that you play. Maybe down the links at Conway, this wouldn't be ideal for the kind of breezy conditions that might affect that ball flight, certainly if you're playing into the wind on a breezy day. So there's some things to consider. But what I will say as well is what Ping have done incredibly well is that there are uh, options available from a two hybrid through to a seven hybrid. A lot of different lofts in between. So I think what it does is no matter what level of play you're at, they offer incredible versatility in these hybrids, in bridging gaps somewhere in that uh, long end of the bag. And I'm pretty sure that although, like I said, this seven hybrid is perhaps for the majority, even the minority, those better players, might find something very useful in that two and three hybrid that Ping are offering. Right, now I said every golfer should have one of these in the bag. And the reason I say that is because a, we've talked about confidence. It's, a, it's an easy club to hit, if you like, um, and that inspires confidence. But it's also got lots of versatility. I think you can play it from the rough, as we've seen. You can play it from a tight lay on the fairway. You can play it off a tee on a par three. Number of reasons how you could use it in the obvious way. But also, I think this is a massively underused club for this type of shot. So it's, what have we got? Maybe sort of 40 yards chip and run is your option i would think most people would play on this lynx type course so i'd be reaching for perhaps a maybe a seven iron that i'd play this kind of shot from but again 
If your confidence isn't great in that type of shot, then for me, the hybrid is perfect. It's almost like a bit of a putting stroke. The club fires off. It takes a little bit of getting used to in terms of how fiery that face is and how much sort of effort you've got to make to get that ball rolling. But I think, again, this, um, this ping version of this club is fantastic for this kind of uh, thing again. Once again, all about sort of how it frames it. Get going, ball. Get going. Not quite enough, is it? It's not a bad effort, you know. It's still making a, its way to the old, but it just frames it really nice. Like I said, it's almost just like a simple putting stroke and a ball just fires off there. Because of the way the, uh, the sole, the wide sole pattern again, there's no chunking, the ball slides, or the club head rather slides along that turf. So again, it does it really well. But the thing about the G425 is what I like. It's got plenty of feel in that face, which resonates in the hands, which makes that type of shot just that little bit easier where you want a little bit of feel and to get that out of a hybrid well that's a bit rare isn't it in fact now i've stopped talking i'm gonna have another little punt at that it's a much better effort much better effort and i'd take that any day of the week would i get me seven iron closer probably not If I can make a quick request, it would be that if you like what you see on this channel, then please consider hitting that subscribe button, maybe even hitting that like button. I'll try playing one off a tee. If it even, uh, if you watch my tee video, ball flight will uh, potentially be even higher. But uh, it's not going to do us any harm trying to stop onto this, uh, this par three green. Again, what's great, that's right at the flag, a great ball flight. Is it enough? No, it's just come up short again, so I'm still thinking in terms of yardage and distance, I'm getting that kind of uh, 160 mark is where I reckon this is travel in terms of uh, ball flight. It's a cold winter's day here at Conway, so it's gonna uh, take a little bit off it in terms of that temperature drop. But yet again, great easy pickup, planted on a tee there, and uh, like I said, just inspires confidence. I think enough was set out on the course, to be honest with you, but I have also collected dry, dry ball data and I've collected it for the two, the four and the seven hybrid. And as I said in that earlier clip, so many different options from Ping. It really is uh, that there's a club for everybody in terms of bridging gaps. If you want to see the data, I'll put it in front of you now for each of the clubs. Well, I'll just put the averages up of the two, the four and the seven. What you'll notice there is I was pretty good, to be honest with you, in terms of the seven hybrid on that average carry around that 160 number, four hybrid in that 190s. But then you see the two hybrid didn't really get past that 200 mark. And again, the launch conditions of the two hybrid compared to the four, I wasn't generating enough club head speed to, to justify the difference, the, the loss of loft, if you like, that was, uh, was seen between that two and the four hybrid. So again, for me, it goes back to the versatility of what I look to put in the bag because the big deal about these hybrids is that there's a huge amount of options, I keep saying it, two to seven hybrid, but within that, each one of those heads is fully adjustable in terms of loft you can add and decrease. And I think that's a major thing that Ping have done, again, incredibly well. So they're offering, to me, more options than any other brand at the minute in this kind of hybrids and also the fairway woods. And getting that mix right of adjusting, either knocking down or increasing loft, just to bridge gaps in that long end of the bag is really key to get that gap in all the way through from down your lower end into your wedges, right the way through into the driver. I think they've got a club that suits everybody. Go back to the video again, my, my overall assessment would be, I think the majority of, this, of golfers out there, average golfers would hugely benefit from the seven, but I think whichever way you go down, I would say, and I'd say this, the, uh, the, the fairway video will be coming out very, very shortly as well. I just think Ping do these incredibly well. Very, very good. They, they seem to pick the ball up so easy. They launch incredibly high. They play from any sort of uh, position, as I've said, from tight lies on the fairway, from out the rough, from off a tee. 
We're mad if we don't put these in the bag. I know a seven hybrid maybe would have been frowned upon by a lot of golfers as uh, almost, uh, I can't say a ladies golf club because that's sexist, but that's effectively what we sort of looked upon as. And I think we're making massive mistakes in doing that. We're ignoring something that's a massive uh, potential, massive help as average golfers. Anyway, that's me done. I think I've already made a request to uh, hit the like button. Um, comments down below, whether you've got one of these in the bag or it's something you're considering again for 2021. Maybe as well, while I'm on here, just a quick apology for the amount of product videos that are coming. You'll know that we're restricted in terms of what we can film right now. So uh, it's a bit monotonous, but we're going through these just in the meantime until we can get back out on the course. And um, perhaps the other thing to say for anybody who's thinking of commenting is that that footage that you've seen out there on the golf course was filmed back in December prior to lockdown. And we're certainly obviously not going out on golf courses right now. That's it. Anyway, I'm done. This should go out. This is a Friday evening and uh, I'll see you back on Monday when I think we're possibly going to look at the uh, fairways from the same G425 range, which is equally impressive. I'll tell you that already.